What's up, everybody? Back with another video with each and every game in the NFL in week 12. We will be discussing all of them, taking our picks, maybe some best bets and our analysis on each one. Let's jump right into it. All right, jumping right in with our Thursday night game. We have the 8-2 and two Steelers going to face the now 2-8 and eight Browns. So flip those records. But nonetheless, it is an AFC North matchup with the Browns coming in as four and a half point underdogs. Browns lost to the Saints by 21 in their last game. Meanwhile, the Steelers uh, pulled out the win against Baltimore. A uh, big divisional win. There's a lot of playoff implications in that one. But we still have Jameis Winston as the starter for Cleveland. Uh, showed a little bit of magic in his first start. Um, that's starting to, to rust off on the Browns here. And on the flip side, Russ has looked really good. His um, average per attempt is now up to 7.8 yards per attempt, much closer to where he was in Seattle. Um, not necessarily lining it up, but he's playing really solid football behind center there. So, I mean, the Bra or the Steelers come in as obvious favorites here. It's four, four and a half points. But um, that line seems a little, little nice to me, at least as far as the Steelers go. Where are you leaning in this, this Thursday night matchup? Yeah, I feel the same way, especially after just taking down and conquering the Ravens. You would think that the 8-2 and two Steelers would be a heavier favorite against the 2-8 and eight Browns. And it's hard for me to look at anything that can justify this line for the Browns, especially with the way that Jameis Winston has played his last two games since beating the Ravens. You know, he, very turnover heavy. The run game has not been there, uh, even with Nick Chubb back. The only thing that the Browns really have going for them is their run defense and their pass rush. And against a Steelers team in the past, I think that'd be uh, very helpful for them. But right now, the Steelers aren't relying on the run the way they used to under uh, like Kenny Baker or even Justin Fields. They have a much more revitalized passing game with uh, George Pickens really being helped out by Russell Wilson, who's looked great in his short tenure here in Pittsburgh. Um, I mentioned the pass rush for the Browns. Far and away, the best pass rush in the NFL right now is the Steelers led by TJ Watt. That should be a huge advantage as the pass blocking unit for the Browns is the third, fourth worst ranked in the league right now. So everything looks to be going on the towards the Steelers here you get the quick pass rush and a turnover prone Jameis Winston it's going to be really hard um, for the Browns in my mind to compete in this game especially without a run game it seems like Pittsburgh minus four and a half is too easy here um, very fishy and I'll probably be in the Browns but I feel like the trap games this year have not been hitting like they've hit in the past I know Vegas has been taking a beating because of that as well so it's something that I continue to track and keep in the back of my mind but a lot of these games that seem too easy usually are. Like, look at the Texans right now um, against the Cowboys who are murdering them and Cooper Rush is throwing picks. Uh, the Lions game against the Jags when they beat him by 40. Like, that's what we all thought was going to happen, and it just seemed too easy. But that seems to be happening a lot more often in the league. I think we got a pretty good nose for the trap games, too. Like, we were on the Broncos this last week. Like, we were on that. But more often than not, I feel like it's just, hey, take the favorite when it's this yeah. obvious. Yeah, no, I mean, that's kind of what I'm turning towards also. I will say, I mean, if you just take a look at the total, so they, they are expecting a super low scoring game, could be mm -hmm. similar to that that Ravens matchup. Because like you said, the Browns, they're still top 10 in defense, but uh, their coverage has been awful the last few weeks. Yeah. Um, But, I mean, we could see another one of those low scoring divisional matchups where the Steelers still win, but just don't cover. Because, I mean, they are relying a lot on that defense to and I think they'll show up here again but I think it could just be one of those games in the teens where the Steelers win but yeah they don't I, I think so. And something that nobody's talking about is you've seen teams, even as poor as the Raiders, light up this Ravens defense in their secondary that has been abysmal all year, quite honestly, especially for their standards. The Steelers won, but they didn't score a touchdown. Their offense wasn't the well or the machine that they kind of had been in prior games. So I think maybe people are going to be reading in really heavily to this game and the Steelers thinking that they're just slayed the Kings of the AFC North and the Ravens. But in all likelihood, it seemed like it might have been more on the Ravens losing that game too, especially with Justin Tucker, who has just not been good this year for the Ravens. No, that's a great point. And then Chris Boswell on the flip side. Yep. Different special teams. If Boswell misses one kick there, it's a completely different game too. So um, now he's a great kicker, but it's, 
you know, it's not easy to replicate making six kicks in a row. Versus Steelers overall. Sorry, Sorry say that again. It's a fishy game here, but leaning towards the Steelers yeah. overall. I yeah. think they're pretty safe, um, straight bet. Yep. They're on the road though. We'll see. <laughs> but <laughs> next up, uh, not as quite. Or, I mean, the Browns are two and eight. This this one actually is just as close in records. But we have the nine and one Chiefs going to Carolina to play the now three and seven Panthers. Um, Panthers are off of a bye in this in this game, which could be underrated. Uh, Chiefs finally lost to the Bills. I mean, been calling for it all year, it seems like. And if anything, it should benefit them. They have, they're just getting away with so many last-second um, plays that go their way that end up helping them pull out. I think we'll start seeing the Chiefs play better down the stretch. But now I feel comfortable calling the Lions the best in the team – or the best league – best team in the league. But – uh, jumping back to this one, uh, Bryce Young's won his last two games. They're off the bye, plus 10 and a half. Can I sell you on the Panthers here, or is there no shot? I don't think you can. Um, just as we were talking about sometimes, it, it just is too easy. I, I think this one, given the Chiefs have the loss, um, I think it might be a little too easy. They're going to get Pacheco back. I don't think enough people are talking about that. Um, you're losing a lot of that explosiveness in the run game with uh, Kareem Mod, who's a solid running back and playing well for them. But he just gets him four or five yards a lot of times less at a time. He's not going to rip off big plays or be a big threat out of the backfield like Pacheco. You're starting to see the Chiefs kind of figure out the balance between their new receivers with Hopkins and obviously their young receiver in Worthy. I'd like to see that uh, keep developing, and I think it could be pretty dangerous once they figure that out. Maybe it's not this week, but the Panthers are a really good defense to try to figure it out against. And then finally, I think – you talked about Bryce Young, but I think the real key for the Panthers these last few weeks has been Chuba Hubbard and how well he's been doing in the run game. Uh, the Chiefs have the fourth best run defense uh, in PFF grade. So I think uh, just with what they're able to do, and especially with what they're able to throw at offenses, will be really difficult for the Chiefs. I always talk about Steve Spagnuolo. He's got the most complicated defensive schemes in NFL. And we all know how Bryce Young has been in his career, especially when he they're trying to simplify this offense for him as a younger and experienced quarterback. I just think the chiefs are at a different league of the Panthers and especially off a loss. I like them here, even though the Panthers have, you know, the bye week going for them. Yeah, no, I mean, you brought up a lot of good points and I could see it being one of those games where the chiefs just blow them out, but I don't know. I kind of like the Panthers spread. I think, I don't think there's, going to be a ton of people on it and that's not the reason to take it per se but it almost is it almost is they have the worst defense in pff like I, if there was a game for the chiefs to get their mojo back and really start to figure out these new pieces it's against this defense it's with pacheco back you start to get these guys under this new newer look offense the chiefs haven't scored more than 28 points in uh regulation this season so it, if, i that's going to change if, this week if the panthers <laughs> can score at least 18 for, for sad. I don't think they can. I know, and that, that could be tough. But I don't know. I be fun. It, they might make it fun. I, I, get, I, I, I hear what you're saying. And with that's the best point you could have made is that the Chiefs are not a high scoring offense this year. And all you got to do for the Panthers is get uh, two touchdowns and a field goal essentially to cover this one. I don't know if they do. We'll okay. see. I, I honestly, I'm more betting on the Chiefs to score more than 28 than I am betting against the Panthers to score 18. Yeah, no, I mean, you're totally, probably totally right. I'm not actually going to bet on this one, but... No, I mean, I think you make great points, though. I really do. Yeah, no. You're selling me a little bit. You're making me second-guess a little bit. The Panthers, I don't know. Bryce Young's just, like, the way he's handled everything, I, I've turned into a big Bryce Young fan. I'm rooting for the guy. <laughs> I mean, yeah. All right, let's, let's move on. Next up, we've got an NFC North matchup. The eight and two Vikings going to now four and six Chicago Bears. Um, Vikings beat the Titans by 10, took care of business, and Bears lost on that blocked field goal, finish up the game. So that's now four straight losses for the Bears. Felt like last week was really the, the week they needed to right the ship here. And now they're three and a half point dogs at home. Do you think they they get back on track here, or do you think it's going to be a slope straight down for the Bears. 
You know, I think they had a really demoralizing loss against the Packers this last game, and it's it's tough to go pick your head up and act like nothing just happened this last week. They played their hearts out, played the best football they could have played, in all honesty, and they still didn't come out with the win, and that's a really tough pill to swallow. Um, I think the under is the one to do in this game. The Vikings offense has not looked as great lately. Jay Jett has been held out on the end zone the last few games. Uh, I think the Bears are going to continue to fight and, and play well, but that's really with their defense. This Vikings team um, has the best run defense in football, so you're not going to be able to get some of these big chunk plays that you've seen with Swift and even Roshan Johnson to some extent. That really leaves this offense in the hands of Caleb Williams and uh, the new offensive coordinator. I think they did a good job of simplifying things down and getting the ball out of Caleb Williams' hand really quickly. That's a great game plan against a subpar defense, but with – the way the Vikings defense has been playing, and especially knowing that they don't need to stack the box to stop the run, uh, I think it might be tough sledding for Caleb Williams. I'm so under Vikings win cover is a different story. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> I feel like the Vikings at eight and two, and a lot of people talked about it early on that they felt a little bit fraudulent, and I don't know. I'm starting to believe that even a little bit more here I think people just forgot they're like oh they're the eight and two Vikings but Sam Darnold hasn't looked great in the last yeah, few weeks we talked good. about it a couple weeks ago um did fine against the Titans but five interceptions in the last two games before that and yeah I mean the Bears are at home I don't know sorry you have to say this for me yeah no I think you made a great point I, I failed to consider the Sam Darnold factor here where he doesn't – and he's had some good games against some good teams, but he doesn't always show up against great defenses, and I think this Bears defense is playing great football right now. You, you're kind of convincing me here with – just by matching Sam Darnold. Like, you just don't know. He's such a wild card. But he's been playing really good. I think he's earned uh, this year enough respect to give him the benefit of doubt, even against a really good defense in the Bears. I, I think it comes down to this Bears offense. I don't think – will put up more points than they just put up against the Packers, which wasn't much. And because, especially because I think the the tiers of defenses between the Vikings and the Packers is probably two steps up. I think the Bears offense is going to struggle. And if you can see a little bit of Jay Jetta, then they cover. But I definitely like the under, because I think, again, the Bears are going to do a good job um, of slowing down this Vikings offense. And no secondary does a better job of slowing down great wide receivers than the Bears this year. Yeah. Um, it's, the, it's the run game that the Bears really struggle with. It, it, I mean, if I'm the Vikings, I'm just going to try to run the ball with Aaron Jones all day. They're, yeah. When they're running the ball well, that's when they win these games. But, yeah, I don't know. I think I'm a little maybe biasly on the Bears, plus three and a half. Like I said, Darnold's not playing that great. Uh, definitely turnover prone. And the Bears defense, I mean, they've been showing up all season. And throw away that one bad loss to the, the Patriots a couple weeks ago. Um, the Bears have been great at home. We're on a long winning streak before that. Just lost on the block field goal. Uh, I really like a plus three and a half. Not so much saying they're going to win the game, but I think the Vikings, they're getting away with a couple of things here and there and still pulling games out where the Bears are. They're scraping back, and we saw how just close they were. So I think they're going to be more hungry for a win. This one. But moving along, sorry for the, the coughing attack on the last. No, it's all good. <laughs> But we got another divisional game, and it seems like that is going to be the, the heavy case across the schedule. Seems like a lot of backloaded divisional games this year. We got the two and eight Titans playing the six and four Texans. Um, Titans officially have the, the worst rated defense on PFF. They're coming off the loss, or the worst rated offense, not, not defense. My thoughts. But uh, the, the Texans play on Monday um, tonight versus the Cowboys. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't have a ton of thoughts on this one. I want to hear what you're leaning. Yeah, I guess the way I think about this game is very similar to the way I thought about it when they just played the Vikings. I thought the Vikings were justified to win by double digits that game, and they did, although it took a little bit and was scary uh, at a few times. But again, very similar situation where you have the Texans team that is a pretty solid defense, and as you alluded to, this Titans offense has been – the worst in the NFL, both just look at the eyeball test and in terms of the advanced metrics. And so it's really hard to get behind a Titans team 
um, that's putting up 13 points a game against the Vikings here. And I mentioned, I, you know, I think pretty highly of the Vikings defense, but I also do um, with the Texans defense as well. Um, the big difference here between those two teams though, is that run defense. You know, I mentioned the last video, the Titans can have a really hard time because the Vikings have such a stout run defense. The Titans are uh, in the number 20th ranked run defense right now. So they're going to see a little bit more livelihood from the running back room in Tennessee. And I think that honestly will give them the edge in a division game, I think, to get this plus eight and a half. Um, I think off the bye, fresh legs. Sorry, not off the bye. They just lost the Vikings. What am I talking about? Um, I think that uh, getting a much more favorable run defense will behoove the Titans here. Can't I don't think they're going to win this game. Would it be the most shocking thing we've seen out of the AFC South? But I do think um, their defense is playing well enough to cover against a favorable defense that plays into their type of offense. I like it. I mean, a game that I don't have a ton of thoughts on, mm -hmm. my couple points playing to it, like Will Levis has been a little bit better since returning from injury. I mean, they're still not playing great as a team, but he's he's not like completely throwing the games away like he was before the injury. We'll see if, if he can show up against this Texas defense. And then on the other side too, and not saying by any means, Will Levis is even close to CJ Stroud, but CJ Stroud is having a definite sophomore slump this year. Completion percentage, yards per attempt, rating, everything's down from year one. So, yeah, I mean, people are hyping the Texans up. I was knocking them a little bit, took my remark back, but <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm with you on the eight and a half, I think. Not, not super sold, but that's where I'm leaning. Next up, we got the nine and one Lions. Uh, tied with the Chiefs for the best record in the NFL, heading to Indianapolis to play the five and six Colts. Lions just blew out the Jaguars, and they've been taking care of business all season in those bigger spread games. And the Colts beat the Jets by one in Anthony Richardson's return. Uh, ran two touchdowns in on the ground, and then also threw for the most uh, yards in his career. And against a pretty solid Jets defense, third. Mm -hmm consistent on when they show up but nonetheless Richardson looks better uh they're at home just over a touchdown they are underdogs in this one I mean do you think the Lions keep rolling or did, did Anthony Richardson show you enough to bet against Colt or the Lions here no I don't I, I think I'm going to stick with the Lions keep rolling and I think right now the move is to just keep betting the Lions spread until otherwise they don't hit the big thing for me is I don't think enough people are talking about how good this Lions defense is because they're so overshadowed by how great their offense is. Um, but Anthony Glenn, um, or Glenn, Aaron Glenn is doing a great job at D coordinator there and just does not get enough praise, even without um, Hutch at D end there as a season ending injury. I don't believe in Anthony Richardson I, is like as a passer. And I think that I change his game long-term to be successful in the NFL. And there's still time to do so. But as of right now against this defense, I can't imagine uh, Richardson doing that much in, in terms of pass game. Lions have done a really good job of shutting down the deep threat, and that's what his bread and butter really is, struggling with the short throws, as, as we've seen. So I think I have to stick with uh, the Lions here to cover. The Colts don't have um, any real redeemable qualities in any certain position outside of Jonathan Taylor and their O-line. I think they're just a very solid team and a very average team fitting of their five and six record. I think they they beat bad teams. Uh, they have potential to play up when they're playing teams like the Jets that play poorly. Um, but I think that a really round team like this Lions team, an elite team, um, should trounce them. In the Lions, you can say that about anyone, though. The Lions should trounce just about anyone, and I think the Colts fall into that category. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm with you on this one. I mean, Lions are number one now in PFF, and deservedly so. They're, they're top 10 in every single uh, defensive rating. Like, I mean, there's not – I mean, we all know their offense. There's no real weaknesses on this team. And, yeah, I just – like you said, Anthony Richardson, hard to trust him, especially against a really good defense. Mm -hmm. And you even mentioned it the weeks before too, though, but Jonathan Taylor, not quite that type of running back that you could just rely on to carry your offense like he has in the years past. Um was under three yards per carry against the Jets, even though they got the win. But, yeah, I don't think they're going to exactly like 
wipe some some magic in a bottle and pull this one out. I think mm -hmm. the lines just ground and pound and end up finding their way to a 10 point win at least. All right, AFC East matchup next here. The three and eight Patriots coming in as a touchdown underdog to the now four and six Dolphins. Patriots lost to the Rams by six. Dolphins beat the Raiders by 15. And my analysis here, I mean, Dolphins are decent favorites. Uh, ever since they got two back, they're kind of in it. But the key here is the Broncos at six and five are sitting in that last AFC playoff spot. I mean, I, I'm not fully sold on the Broncos finishing the season above 500, but I mean, this late in the, the game, they definitely could. But I, I still think the Dolphins are going to somehow pull it out. And just in my mind, they're a better team than the Broncos. So, I mean, I don't know. They just got a lot more to play for. Drake May on the flip side, he he wants to build as much chemistry, get as many wins as they can. But I just think the Dolphins, I think they could still sneak into the playoffs here at four and six. So, I like them as touchdown favorites. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I think I disagree with your take on the Dolphins. I, I don't think they're a playoff team. Um, I do think the Broncos are better than them um, in a couple of different ways. But – the the Dolphins need to keep winning if they want to keep that dream alive, certainly. And that starts with this game against a really weak divisional opponent here at home. So I'm with you. I the Dolphins should win this game. I'm gonna take them to win the game, but I, I don't have a lot of confidence in them. I think this game for the, the Patriots is very similar to the game they just played against the Rams. I think the Dolphins and Rams are very similar teams in terms of makeup. Poor defense, poor secondary, a lot of offensive weapons, uh quarterback that can have some turnovers at time, but can play great. You saw the Patriots. I was on them plus four and a half last week. Uh, a couple too many turnovers and poor red zone execution was the reason they didn't cover that. I think if they can shore that up this week against the Dolphins, uh, they can. I think they're going to compete for this game for the win. I can't put enough trust in them to say they're going to win the game, but I'm certainly on the Patriots plus seven. And that's not a real endorsement of this Patriots team. I think it's more of an indictment on my end of the Dolphins. I, I'm not a believer. Uh, Tyreek Hill's talking about playing through his wrist injury. You haven't seen much Jalen Waddle. You rely a lot of HN out of the backfield, and now Johnny Smith is looking really good at tight end. Um, but I think this is a very similar matchup with the Patriots just experience, as I mentioned. And uh, they covered plus six last game. I think they're going to keep this one close this game. Again, if they can either – not be minus two in the turnover margin or just convert one more red zone opportunity, then I think they're going to be in decent shape here. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't hate it. I just, I don't trust the Patriots defense enough. And one yeah, I know. It's really issue. Still, still a rookie quarterback, but I mean, we'll see. We'll revisit that one next week. Next up, we have the four and six Bucks going to New York to play the two and eight Giants. This is a weird one. Both of them are off of buys, so nobody really gets a, an advantage. And we also have Tommy DeVito set to start. Yeah. So they're the five and a half point dogs at home. Are you expecting any DeVito magic like last year? Are we going to see any uh, pinstripe suits on the lines? <laughs> I, well, that we might see. I'm, I'm hoping for that. But I don't think that you get enough DeVito magic here with the way the Giants have been playing. But more importantly, I, I even without their top dogs at wide receiver, I still have a lot of respect for what the Buccaneers have been doing offensively uh, and what Baker Mayfield's been doing offensively. You, I, it's a low total here, and I think they're thinking that this Giants defense um, will keep them in the game. But the Giants defense is 21st overall in PFF grade. Like, I haven't seen uh, – sorry, that's that's run defense – let me revise my statement. The Giants defense is 13th in defense, which is pretty solid. Um, but I've seen a lot out of this Bucks team offensively, and I think they're going to keep that rolling. And I just also don't believe in in Tommy DeVito, really. Like, he's a fun guy. Love to root for him. But with what I've seen this Bucks offense do this year, again, even without and in spite of losing their top receivers, uh, I've been pretty impressed. They fought tooth and nail to play the Chiefs that game and uh, just barely lost – in overtime, I think that um, they get the job done here after the bye against the Giants. I know that's not a relative advantage with the bye, but I do believe that um, they're going to figure things out. I think they're better than their four and five record indicates. Uh, it's so early in the week, but... You got to pause. You, you sound really quiet again. 
Yeah, I'm not getting what you're saying here. Oh, really? Can you hear There me? you go. You're a little bit better there. All uh, right. No, yeah, but there's there's potential Mike Evans to play in this game. All right. Still, still early in the week, but we'll see. All right. Let's jump along. Next up, we got the three and six Cowboys currently. They're playing on Monday night. They're coming in as nine and a half point dogs on the road in Washington. Another divisional matchup. Uh, Commanders coming off that loss to the Eagles, and that was on last Thursday, so they get the extra rest heading into this one. Cowboys even get a day less playing on Monday. Uh, we've seen how that goes, has gone all season. Pretty much the team with the extra rest has, I'm pretty sure, has covered every single time this far. Um, and we're seeing it right now on Monday, but Dak won't be back for the rest of the year. It's also Dan Quinn. Uh, playing his former team in the Cowboys. So a lot of, a lot of reasons I kind of like the commanders in this one. I don't know why you would necessarily decide with the Cowboys. You never know if that defense shows up. Michael Parsons could take the game over, but I love the, the commanders nine, minus nine and a half. What are your thoughts at? Yeah, I got nothing to add there. I think with the extra day of rest um, with the, the Cowboys playing on Monday night, with the way that the commanders have looked, uh, you know, everything with how poor that, the uh, com the Cowboys offenses look Cooper Rush. You got to hit Commanders here, minus nine half. It's it's too easy, and you got to hope they execute. Love it, love you. All right, moving along, we have the six and five Broncos, and they're going to Vegas to play the two and eight Raiders divisional matchup once again. Uh, Broncos just blew out the Falcons in that trap game that we were talking about last week. And then the Raiders lost to the Dolphins uh, in a game that the Dolphins absolutely needed. But Raiders are still sticking with Minshew. They're talking week to week. And this team has kind of just fallen out of the news just as far as relevancy. Mm -hmm. um, not really competing the last few weeks. And meanwhile, the Broncos are surprising everyone. They're in the playoff picture and now up to the fifth overall defense on PFF. There's a lot of signs pointing to the Broncos here. Are you siding with them on the road, or is there any devil advocate that you would take the the Raiders at home? No, I, I feel stupid for how much I love the Broncos this game. You know, the Raiders have such a poor defense, and really uh, because they're, they're – we talk about every week, their coverage great. They have a pretty solid run defense, and they've been doing well this year. Uh, actually, sixth best overall run defense. But it's the that's not the Broncos game. They're not running the ball – with Javante Williams all the time. They're, they're doing running back by committee and letting Bo Nix cook. Uh, you've seen Cortland Sutton really emerge as a true wide receiver one in that offense. And the way that they're putting up points offensively, the way that Bo Nix is looking, and really the way that this Raiders secondary is looking, is making it really hard for me to make any point with the Raiders, especially, as you mentioned, given how elite this Broncos defense has been, um, both in the run defense and the pass game. I just I love the Broncos here. And I, I don't like how much I love them. Me too. I mean, I think four and a half is just a little too high, especially just the way these two teams have been playing. I just I can't find a reason to really buy on the Raiders though. <laughs> Which that was not at all. But maybe sometimes it's obvious. Uh, moving along, we have the five and five. The San Francisco 49ers, they're going to Green Bay to play the seven and three Packers. Niners just lost by three to the Seahawks, a game that not many people suspected. The Packers get lucky on that win, or not, I mean, sort of lucky on the missed call, however you want to look at it, but they mm -hmm. won a block field goal. Uh, CMC is getting into the flow of things, up to his yards per carry from his return game from three yards to 4.2. So he's going to take a little time to get going. And then the Packers are the only team um, in the bottom third of PFF with uh, a winning record. A mm. little bit of fraud watch there, but what are your thoughts? Yeah, I'm definitely giving the Packers a little bit of fraud watch. I think they're a good team. The defense uh, was really propped up by turnovers early in the year, and it's not really working out for them these days. Uh, they were lucky to get that win against the Bears. And conversely, the 49ers here, you can consider them pretty unlucky or just really not playing well with injuries. Um, but they're the fourth highest team overall in PFF grade. I think 
we're getting every time they lose the next week. It's like it's a must win game for these guys. This is not an easy division anymore. Like we thought it was going to be going into this season. So I think the Niners win this game out right here. Um, they've got a really solid defensive personnel. Um, you talk about CMC getting more into it. I just, I, I don't think in flat out throw out all the numbers and the metrics. I don't think the, the Niners can lose this game. And so I think they win this one against the Packers who got away with one against Chicago, probably riding an emotional win. Um, but this is going to be a lot different game than playing the Bears. I can tell you that. Yeah, no, I I think the Packers drop this one here. I just feel like, like I said, I think seven and three, um, only team with a winning record in the bottom third of PFF. Yeah, could be could be a, a slide coming for them. But moving along, we have the Cardinals. At six and four, they're going to Seattle to play the five and five Seahawks. Um, another divisional matchup, probably the most we've had in a week so far. Um, and then the Cardinals, they're off of a bye. Uh, almost an even line. Where, where are your thoughts for this game? Yeah, almost an even line and almost even teams in terms of PFF grade, really across the board. These teams are very identical. Um, 10 and 11 overall with Seattle getting the edge, actually. Um, good passing grades with Seattle slightly edging them out. Um, I'll tell, I'll tell, they're very similar across the board. The main difference is good pass blocking, better pass blocking team um, for the Cardinals and a better pass rush team for Seattle and a little bit better coverage grade with Seattle's guys like Tariq Woolen and Witherspoon there, but nothing flying off the page. I think these teams in spread in terms of PF grade and eyeball test are very similar. The one difference is I have seen Geno Smith make way too many turnovers this year. Uh, and you've seen Kyler Murray in this offense look very competent and very in control unlike before, I think. And for that reason, I think I have to go with the Cardinals here. They've looked just more competent in the games that I've seen from them, but do not count out a home team against a divisional opponent ever, especially one this close, especially when you look at it after a long losing streak, Seattle is somehow back in this playoff hunt here too. Things can be a really close game and a really good game. I, I'm on the Cardinals right now. I'm probably going to switch to the Seahawks. Yeah, I'm, I'm on the opposite. I'm leaning the Seahawks right now. Probably going to jump. <laughs> yeah, this one's tough. I mean, it's divisional too. I guess the thing is the Seahawks are at home. So if, do you really think the, the Cardinals are that much better? Because they're even line. They're saying the I'll say this because of the turnovers, they've been playing better. Like their offense is smoother. They're not relying on um, like the Geno Smith in Seattle, really big chunk plays. Like they, Arizona gets that, but it's because of the methodical churning of the offense and the, and the dink and dunks and this four and five yard gains that they're able to get consistently. And so it's this kind of a different tale of the tape here. But um, I really like the way Jackson Smith and Jigbert wide receiver has been looking. For the Seahawks, you get DK Metcalf a little more integrated in this offense, and then it becomes a really scary deep threat. But with the, you, they're not consistent, and that's why I think I like the Cardinals, at least as I sit here right now. Yeah, I think that's a completely fair point. So you turn on the Seahawks one week, and they're losing to a bottom third team by double digits. The next week, they're, they're beating the Niners, who could be anywhere in your rankings, but. Yeah, nonetheless, they're completely inconsistent. Uh, never know what you're going to get on that defensive side of the ball. Mm -hmm. Right. For this next one, um, not a ton of great matchups, I guess, this week. Um, I feel like we've, we've gotten spoiled the last couple of weeks, but yep. um, wrapping up with some of our better games here, we got the 8-2 and two Eagles. They're going to LA to play the now 5-5 five and five Rams. we Talked about it weeks ago that they'd get back in this playoff race, and they're right there. But this is Sunday night football. Uh, Eagles beat the Commanders last Thursday night, so they do have that extra time coming into this one to prepare. But on the flip side, the Rams are healthy, and when they've been healthy, they've been looking like one of the best teams in the National Football League. Um, Stafford was cooking this last week. And, yeah, these are two teams that are hot right now. Uh, which side are you leaning with the, the Rams as three-point underdogs? 
Yeah, I might be Great. foolish here, but I love the Eagles in this game. I, even throw out the extra time coming up Thursday night. I just think they're in a different league than the Rams. And I don't think the Rams are that good of a football team. I think they really flash you with their passing offense. And if you can't stop Cooper Cup and Puka Nakua like the Patriots, the Rams are going to get the best of you. The Eagles here, I talked about it ahead of the game against the Commanders. They've got the – they had tied for the best coverage ranking in all of football. And after that game against uh, the Commanders, especially shutting down – um, Terry McLaurin, their coverage ranking increased and got better. And now they're the standalone best coverage unit in football. That's going to bode incredibly difficult for this Rams team. And I love the way and how well balanced this Eagles offense is with their offensive line. It's Saquon Barkley, Jalen Hurts getting some rushing yards in there too. And looking a lot better as a passer this year than he did last year. I think dealing with some injuries and some nagging pain a lot through last year. I think the Eagles are actually one of the best teams in football. And I hesitate to say that, but I, I think they're about to make that leap. And I also think this is the only team in the NFC that I would uh, think twice about picking uh, the Lions against. Now, the Lions are the better football team, but I think the Eagles are the only one that have a chance of preventing the Lions to being showing up in the Super Bowl this year. So I think very highly of the Eagles, and I think they match up very well against the Rams. Uh, I'm on the Eagles here and the spread. All right. No, I, I like it. Um, I'm I'm Still got to lean with the Rams on my end. Um, because plus three at home, I mean, if we get a somewhat close game, I and mean, you can still cover at the home dog here. But yeah, I mean, the Eagles are the better overall team, but just the way this the, the Rams offense is looked with Stafford, Huff, Nakua, and Kyron all on the field, I mean, they've been in every single game when those guys are healthy. Um, getting them with plus plus points here at home, I, I can't pass it up, but I do agree. I think. The Eagles are the only team in the NFC that will beat the Lions in the playoffs, but I do think the Rams could beat the Eagles, though. We'll see. You know what? They're not mutually exclusive. You're not wrong when you say that. Yeah. I mean, we'll, we'll see, though. We'll, we'll revisit this one as well. Not, not usually too much swaying opinions. We'll wrap it up with our Monday night game. Uh, we have the 7-4 and four Ravens going to play the 7-3 and three Chargers. Um, looking to be a great matchup here. Um, Ravens coming off that tight loss to the the Steelers that we talked about earlier. And then the Chargers, they just beat the Bengals by 7 to take care of business. Um, similar spread here. Which, which side are you leaning? See, this one in my mind is a lot more difficult to pick. You know, on one hand, you cannot expect the Chargers offense to match what the Ravens offense has the potential to do. But this Ravens secondary has been abysmal. They're they're letting up a ton of yards. Uh, they're not playing to the caliber that we're used to seeing them. And on the opposite hand, this Chargers team, it, for the eyeball test, is playing great defensively. And from the metric side, too, fourth best coverage unit, uh, looking like a real well-rounded above average team that doesn't really stick out in one facet of the football game. So I really like how balanced the Chargers are here. But what we saw on Sunday night with the Chargers is that they're still in Justin Herbert is still more than willing to let up a lead when they get it. Uh, and this is a scary team and the Ravens to let up, uh, let them claw back in the game and leave really any opening to win. I think with how impressive the Ravens are and how good of a season Lamar Jackson's having, even with, um, you know, the fourth best overall defense in football right now in the Chargers. I'm going to believe in Lamar Jackson here to not drop two in a row. And that's really what the bet is here. Not necessarily on the teams. Because so I think if you tick, if I didn't know anything about the players and I just saw the resumes this year, more often than not, I think I'd be in the Chargers this game because I really like what their defense is doing. But I just don't trust Justin Herbert in big games. And in, at least in the regular season, I very much trust Lamar Jackson. So I'm going to be on the Ravens to cover if that wasn't clear. I'm with you on this one. I don't like them. Still minus the three. The, the Chargers offense just hasn't been as explosive. I mean, like you said, they're a well-balanced team. Kind of stick to the the, the regular play on. Like, they're going to keep running the ball. Herbert's not getting as many attempts as before. So, 